Salutations, everyone, and welcome to What Mattered, the show where I tell you what mattered in the news this week. A whole lot mattered, a lot of people getting excited about a Star Wars trailer, a Batman vs. Superman trailer. What I'm personally excited for is Archie vs. Predator number one. No joke, that's a real thing. Here's a picture. It has a fantastic storyline, the best since Alien vs. Garfield. So, happy Star Wars Celebration Week, everyone. We got a lot of Star Wars stuff to talk about. So, let's start with the trailer. It, I mean, it looked awesome. Let's just, let's just be honest. It looked awesome. A lot of people are always going to be skeptical, and a lot of people are going to hate this movie just because Star Wars fans love hating on Star Wars. But uh, I think it looks awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I mean, there's still a lot of questions, a lot of things that are supposedly leaked, a lot of, like, action figure stuff, some trading card stuff. It's like, oh, who's this character? Who's this? Oh, man, this guy's this, and blah, 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 blah. I mean, of course that's going to happen with something this big. People are going to want to, you know, analyze trailers frame by frame. They're going to want to get as much information as possible, spoil as many things for themselves as they can. And that's fun for some people. Um, I'm not going to have any spoilers on this show for anyone just wanting to have as least amount of information about this movie as possible before you see it, just so you can be surprised by all the things. That is something I will leave up to you. There's a lot of questions, however, that need to be answered, or maybe they won't be answered in future trailers. We don't know, like, who the main character is, why this guy keeps taking off of his helmet and breathing really hard, or really, you know, what the focus of the film is going to be. We saw Han and Chewie there at the end of the trailer, and uh, looks like they're back in Tatooine. We did, however, get a lot of information about the Star Wars Battlefront video game. We got our first ever look really at the game outside of the concept art that we got a long time ago. There was some pre-alpha build available for people to play, and we've learned a lot about the game so far. Now, there have always been stupid people, and mind be stupid people, I honestly mean stupid people, who saw, oh man, EA, they're making Battlefront, they're just gonna be reskinning Battlefield with Star Wars stuff. That was a stupid thing to think, especially if you've played a Battlefield game or if you've played a Battlefront game, I of which have played all of them. And uh, of course it's not like Battlefield and people played it and they're like, no, it's absolutely nothing like Battlefield. It's like Battlefront. Shocker. It will not, however, be exactly like the previous Battlefront games in that there won't be any space battles, unfortunately. At least at launch there might be like a, a new game mode that they add later in DLC that's just nothing but space fights, which definitely could work, wouldn't be a surprise, and I actually would hope uh, to come out, but uh, there are still flyable and other vehicles in the game, um, just not in space, just on the field with the troops, you know, like Rose Squadron altitudes we're talking here. There's also not going to be a campaign. There is, however, going to be a co-op mission mode separate from the online competitive multiplayer. These missions will take place in the same areas of the maps in the multiplayer, but they are going to be changed and have some sort of different objective for you to complete each time. While this is a bit of a, a little bit of a letdown, the campaign and all the Battlefront games were fantastic. I would definitely like to see the campaign return. I just think that uh, EA are focusing on getting the multiplayer aspect, you know, right. Um, this is going to be the first. Uh, Battlefront game that is going to be, you know, online multiplayer because we didn't have one last generation when online multiplayer became a thing that everyone could do. Um, so this is going to be the first time we get to see that, so they want to focus on it and get it right. Also, they that's a lot to do. Um, this is the first, uh, and they had to build it from the ground up, you know, I'm not going to use an engine from the PlayStation 2 days. And they had a lot of graphical assets, you know, in, you know, a current generation uh, installments to do, so I think they had a lot on their plate and they're just trying to focus on what they think is the most important and getting out in a timely fashion in time for the movie to come out, so it's not a lot of surprise that there is no campaign and there doesn't seem to be as much 
in this game as many of us hoped. They've only announced four planets so far, including a free DLC map that will be coming out. If you pre-order it, you get that free DLC a week earlier, so there's your incentive for pre-order. I'm sure there's gonna be like other incentives and like special editions and stuff like that. But there's gonna be uh, no battle log, and uh, you know it's going to have the heroes and villain characters come back from other Battlefront games. Uh, there's no word yet on how you access them. Is it a timed thing? Is it a score-based thing? Is it a map? You know something to do within the map. But yeah, you could be Darth Vader or you know a Jedi or it looks like Boba Fett. And you will, in this DLC map, be taking place between Return of the Jedi and the upcoming Force Awakens movie. And it'll show you what happened in that battle, of course, in the aftermath of which the trailer from Force Awakens takes place when it comes to the Millennium Falcon and TIE Fighters. And that's, that's pretty cool that we get to see a battle in between the films that we otherwise wouldn't see. And gives us a little bit of a history lesson of the new Star Wars universe. Like the other Battlefronts, you can switch between first person and third person mode on the fly. It's a very smooth transition. There's no cover system. It's just, it's still a lot like Battlefield in the scope of the battle and the in the in the size of the map the vehicles the, the foot soldiers first person third person the hero uh, classes that you can use so it looks to be everything that we wanted but not maybe as much as we wanted and when it comes to the amount of maps or you know other things that they might not have told us yet they're you know it's in pre-alpha right now, so there's still a lot of things that they're working on. Uh, they'll probably ha get more details as the year goes on. I mean, it does come out in December after all. We usually don't hear about a game like this this early, but it's been so anticipated, especially since there's been only two, or no, three Star Wars games in the last seven years or something like that because all of the other ones got canceled and or were just never made. So a lot of people highly anticipating this game, including myself, and it looks to be pretty god dang awesome. So in Kingdom Hearts news, I finally beat 1.5 HD Remix. No, but uh, I, I did, but that's not the point. Uh, we have learned some new uh, developmental updates when it comes to Kingdom Hearts 3, which will be hitting Xbox One and PlayStation 4 probably next year. They said they will release new details at D23 in Japan, which is in November. So if they're going to be releasing a lot of details then, I and mean, it's not coming out this year. I don't think uh, a lot of people were expecting it to come out this year. Maybe if even if it had like a planned, you know, one of the, those games that has a, a New Year's Eve release date and then eventually just gets pushed back to the next year. That would probably be the most people could hope for. But yeah, it's definitely coming out not this year. It's going to be coming out next year. They said they're going to get the game out as quickly as possible. But uh, when asked if they were going to come out this year, they were just... It was uh, it was pretty telling in their language that it's not going to come out this year, but they are hard in development on it. They also strongly hinted or basically just flat out said they're having a mobile uh, Kingdom Hearts game that they're working on and it will be coming out maybe this year. And, uh, you know, people have still been wondering about is 1.5 and 2.5 going to be coming out to the current generation of consoles, which would be weird because we just got these and it's like it'd be an HD remix of an HD remix. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, but the Xbox fans, which are getting uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, would definitely benefit from getting the previous games if they didn't have a PlayStation 3, like all those cool people. Um, but, you know, the developers said, you know, we have a lot on our plate right now with Kingdom Hearts 3 and we want to make sure that we don't push that development back any further than it already is. So it sounds like, eh, we want to, but no, it's not, it's not going to happen. We're working on Kingdom Hearts 3 and I'm thankful for that. And I will be playing 2.5, uh, uh, soon-ish for those of you wondering. So the Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice trailer came out early after it was leaked and they were like, we were going to have it on Monday, but uh, screw it. I mean, people are already watching this bootlegged Spanish handicam version anyway. So it came out and uh, I thought it was pretty good, actually. I know a lot of people want to hate it so much and a lot of people will just flat out hate it based off of this first little teaser, which is hilarious in its own right, but so many people want to hate this because of, you know, whatever they feel. I, a, a bevy of reasons, but I think it looks pretty cool. The big question is, since we heard that this film was going to be made, is why are Superman and Batman fighting, and how is that going to go down? 
Well, it seems we've been getting a little, tiny bit of insight, a little bit of clues, but no downright explanation as to why they are fighting. Um, people have been speculating that it's this or that, or this comic book storyline, or this comic book storyline. I don't think it's based off of a comic book storyline. People are saying, oh yeah, oh, it's totally The Dark Knight uh, Returns, Rises, uh, 2.5 HD Remix. But, uh, no, it doesn't look like that at all. We see Ben Affleck as Batman, and he's got the power suit on, which is super cool. Superman has a cult following, so maybe it's going to be a cult of Superman thing, where people are following Superman, and they're doing bad things in his name, and that he gets blamed for it. We see these soldiers, these armed soldiers with Superman insignia on it, so that definitely points towards a cult of Superman and this like weird Day of the Dead thing where everyone's like reaching towards Superman and they have a statue that says False God and then Jesse Eisenberg is talking. So uh, who knows what it's going to be. Is it going to be a cult of Superman thing where he gets blamed for what they're doing? Does Lex Luthor do something and then frame Superman for it? And Batman's like, oh shit, I gotta stop this dude. And then they become friends and then the Justice League happens. Where's Wonder Woman fitting in this thing? We don't know. Is Jason Momoa showing up? Is Aquaman? I don't know. Is the freaking... So many questions, but I mean, I like it. A lot of people have been love loving to shit on any sort of superhero movie that has any sort of darkness or grittiness to it, because like, oh, they've, oh, everything's got to be gritty. Everything should be super fu happy and campy and Guardians of the Galaxy-ish. But no, this is what it should be in tone, and I'm glad that it is. The bat suit looks awesome. The Mark Miller, the power suit, and the super, it, it looks like it definitely could be good. I definitely have a lot that I think this movie needs to prove, especially since they're just trying to start this DC universe from the get-go and do a Justice League before anyone has their solo films and establishing a new Batman and it's uh, it's got a lot to do. It's a very very important movie when it comes to the future of the DCU cinematic uh, experience and uh, I mean it hasn't disappointed me so far but this is step point five. And lastly, the Super Smash Brothers update came out. Mewtwo is there, and he's awesome, and he's you know doing the Mewtwo things. Not really a lot changed from Brawl. Um, he's not going to be a high tier character, but still fun to use. And with the update came you know all the hacker people going into the code and trying to find little th goodies. And looks like they might have found a couple of sound files from Ryu and Roy. So there's a surprise. We knew that, you know, Lucas is coming and they were asking people what new DLC characters would you want. No one even talked about Ryu. I don't know. They have Capcom characters in there already and he is kind of like, outside of Mega Man, he's the Capcom character. I mean, he's Street Fighter, man. He's freaking Ryu. And uh, that'd be awesome if he got into the game. He would have a projectile and be super close up in Melee. And Roy coming back. I mean, I was a Roy main in Melee, but I wasn't super disappointed that he wasn't back. And I was like, we don't need another Marth clone. Lucina is already super awesome, and I like her a lot. But uh, a lot of people, Roy's our boy. He got really big in Project M. So not a huge surprise, but I would like hope if they do DLC characters, they wouldn't do clones, even if they were awesome when they first came out, and just give us new characters like Ryu. That'd be that's super awesome. If that's the case, we don't know. Uh, like a lot of people can't confirm, you know, that this is there in the update and that this guy found it somehow, but he's known for finding things. We don't even know if uh, Sakurai and Nintendo and Hell Laboratories is even planning on, you know, finishing these characters. Maybe like they're in the works, but sometimes that often doesn't come to the fruition of a full character. We've seen that with the past couple of Smash games, but if these two did come out, that'd be pretty sweet. Anyways, everyone, that is what mattered this week. If you'd like to know what matters in the future, you can hit the subscribe button below. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.